What's up everybody for today's video tutorial we're going to be using user submitted photos by Patrick Garisi I believe I'm pronouncing that right hopefully I am if not I apologize and the photo location was Little River Australia so we have the full core here which is pretty neat um, I really want to get out to Australia in the future hopefully next year we'll see um, I'm going to be putting his information for his YouTube account, which has some amazing drone and time-lapse footage, as well as his Instagram in the description below. But let's jump on into his photos. He was having some issues blending his sky shot with a twilight foreground. Um, so we're going to show you guys how to do that pretty naturally. Um, and let's just go over the photos of the sky first. So his... One of his shots had this uh, telephone pole in it. Um, he made the right call by taking a few steps forward and getting that out of his frame. So that way I could work with a nice clean Milky Way here with no obstructions. Now it does look like he did bracket these images because the ISO drops in each photo. Um, we're actually going to correct this. We're going to bump up the exposure so they all match each other and then we're going to bring these five photos into starry landscape stacker if you're using a uh, mac if you have a pc check out sequator to do pretty much the same thing as starry landscape stacker so first let's make some adjustments to these images um, now i'm going to fix the vignetting here and we're going to remove the chromatic aberrations now since I don't know the lens that he used, um, I'm going to just go with a Sony, let's make it the 16 to 35. It removes some of the vignette. Uh, we could take a little bit more away. And I'm not worried about the distortion. I'm not going to mess with any other settings for now until after I stack the images. Now there's one thing I would like to point out to you Patrick is try shooting at 20 seconds instead of 25 seconds. It'll make your stars a little sharper. Um, and I also recommend bringing that ISO up a little bit higher as well. Try shooting around 3200 and you could increase your f-stop a little bit to help bring back some corner to corner sharpness. Go to like f32 or f4 that'll help correct some of those uh, imperfections. Um, but you are going to have to crank up that ISO a little bit. Alright, so I'm just going to copy and paste my settings to the rest of the images. And then what I want to do is increase the exposure of these images so they're a little brighter um, before we bring them into Starry Landscape Stacker. Now as we can see with this image, the white balance got really cool. So let's try Auto. Alright, that looks pretty good. It looks like the other photo before it. You know what, let's do auto on this one as well. It just warmed them up a little bit. I want to increase the exposure. Alright, so now they all look pretty similar, so I'm going to go and select them and go File, Export. Now, I made a user preset here um, called Milky Way Stack, and basically it puts it in its own subfolder uh, with its own custom name. The format is a TIFF file. For image sizing, I don't resize it to anything other than maybe bumping up the resolution to 300 pixels per inch and that's about it so then we hit export now I already did this to save some time so I have a folder on my desktop already so I'm just gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna open up starry landscape stacker here are my five images we'll hit open Now if you get a message like this, uh, that's because some of the images were slightly darker. Um, so it's not sure if it's a dark frame or not. We're just going to make it all light frames. And just hit work with current images. 
Now, because I don't know the focal length, I'm just going to say 16 for that. Shouldn't really matter. All right, so we're gonna paint our little red dots in the sky. And we have a couple red dots in the foreground, so let's erase those. I think that's actually just a red light in the foreground. Okay, so hit Find Sky. And we just gotta clean this up. So make sure the sky is painted nice and blue. It doesn't have to be perfect around this tree line because we are changing out the foreground. So that looks pretty good like that. Next you want to hit Align and Composite. Next we have this drop down box right here with different blending modes. I typically go with Mean, Min, Horizon Noise. Uh, it seems to give me the best results. Definitely you know, play around, check out which one works well for you, but this is the one I prefer. And I'm going to hit save. And I'll just leave the file name that it generated. And we could close Starry Landscape Stacker. And here's my new image. So let's just bring that into Lightroom. All right, so here's the stacked image. And we could compare it with a single really quick. Now as we zoom in here, you could see the noise from the single image versus the stacked image. And uh, if you shorten that shutter to around 20, maybe even 15 seconds, um, this would be even a little sharper. So definitely try that out next time. But for this example, it should be fine. All right, so I don't confuse my stacked image with my singles. I'm going to give it a five star rating. And next we want to pick the foreground that we're going to blend it with. Now for the foreground we have uh, two different options. He sent me one with this telephone pole and the road and one with the road by itself. Now I prefer the road by itself just because of the, the leading lines and um, you don't have any distractions like a telephone pole. To me this is just a lot more complex to mask out and it's just doesn't really help your photo it doesn't make it any more interesting it's just a telephone pole so uh, I would definitely opt to use something like this now, I believe he took these photos around sunrise and if we zoom in um, I think some of them came out a little blurry so I'm going to avoid using those uh, that one's sharp that one is a little blurry Uh, that one's also a little blurry. So the brighter one is probably the sharpest one, but it's a little too bright. We want to tone this down because it's supposed to be a night image. Now the good thing is the Milky Way shot is also pretty bright because it seems like there's a decent amount of light pollution in this area. So you can get away with a brighter foreground, but I still definitely want to tone it down a little bit so it doesn't look like it's daytime or anything like that. So let's go over some of the adjustments that we're going to do just to kind of set this file up before we blend it with the sky. So I want to lower the exposure a little bit. So let's go to negative 0.6. And what I'm going to do is create a brighter area in the foreground for the road. So I'm going to draw this oval out and increase the shadows a little bit. Uh, let's bring it in a little bit better. There is a lot of vignetting, so we want to fix that a little bit. Go to remove chromatic aberrations. This will help when we blend the tree line in. Sometimes what I like to do is also bump these sliders up as well. And same thing, we'll just go to Sony, 16, increase that a little bit more. All 
I want to adjust the horizon, straighten that out a little bit. I think this is like a hill or something like that, so I don't want to go too far. But that looks pretty good. And I just want to darken this area on the sides of the road. And as things get further away, you want to make it dark as well. So let's take this paintbrush. And we're going to lower the exposure. Let's start off with minus 0.5. Just kind of paint the tree line and this back area and along the grass. I might have to make it a little darker. I don't want to go too much, but... I'm also going to desaturate these areas a little bit. Now if the sky was a lot darker, I would definitely darken this foreground even more. But because it is pretty bright due to light pollution, uh, we'll leave it around this brightness and we could always make some more fine-tuned adjustments after we blend the sky with this foreground so um, We could really dial it in even better So let's give this a five star rating as well and Choose my two five stars edit in open as layers in Photoshop All right, so we have our two images we could see uh, the resolution slightly off because I increased it slightly when I when I did the sky in Starry Landscape Stacker. So I'm just going to stretch the foreground out a little bit. Edit Free Transform, and we'll just bring that over here. Okay, so let's make a copy of each image, and we're going to bring the foreground layer to the top. Now I'm going to lower the opacity of the foreground just so I can see where the sky is going to fall. And we're going to raise the sky up a little bit. I don't want to go too high. I want to keep these trees hidden below the horizon line. Now there's a couple things you can do if you want to bring the sky higher. You could clone these trees out with some more sky. Um, I could also just warp the image and just kind of bring it up a little higher as well but I'm just gonna stop it right there and go back to the foreground layer and increase the opacity next we're gonna create a layer mask grab my paintbrush make sure it's on 100% hardness um, opacity should be at 100% and let's go with a pretty large brush and make sure it's on black sky is a little bit off let me just move that over as you get closer to the horizon you're just gonna shrink your brush down get really close to that tree line so get a smaller brush It's okay if you hit the trees a little bit. That's not going to affect anything. Next, I want to right click my layer mask and go to select the mask. Now take note of my settings for this. Um, radius, one pixel, smooth, one, Feather 0.1, sometimes I do 0.2. Contrast, I like to keep it around 10 to 20%. Shift edge, I'll, I like to keep it in negative. This will help to prevent, like if you have a blue sky, um, leaving like blue around the tree line. So usually I'll do like negative five or negative 10%. And decontaminate colors is a really good option. In the past, it was just a check button and there's no slider. And sometimes it worked great. Sometimes it, did, you know, it made all these weird artifacts. 
now they have this slider tool which really helps control that so I'm glad they they updated this decontaminate colors helps get rid of blue that might be around like the tree as well so it's a really good slider to use but use it sparingly don't go too high with it it'll really make some like weird blurry um, it'll like kind of blur the trees a little bit if you go too high so that's just something to take note next we're just gonna start painting away around the horizon and the trees and once you let go of the button then you'll see the results let's zoom in here as you can see it did a pretty good job um, I'm actually really satisfied with the way that came out right off the bat you could always adjust the sliders to uh, dial it in even more if you need to but this did a really good job alright so if you like it hit OK I'm going to move this one down to the bottom I don't need that now if you want to make some adjustments to this layer mask um, you could do so right now I'm just gonna hit the backslash button and I'll show me where the mask is now I'm just gonna paint back some areas around the horizon sometimes when you have like mountain ranges with white snow the white on the mountains will actually get masked out so you might want to paint them back in um, I'm not gonna go too crazy And I'm just going to kind of run this brush along the horizon a little bit around here as well, just to kind of darken that up. Alright, so that looks pretty good right there. Next, I'm going to flatten my image. Now, if you are planning on doing some destructive editing or maybe you want to make some changes in the future, definitely don't flatten your image. You could save it out like this and work on it again later. But um, for this tutorial, I'm going to flatten my image. Then I'm going to make a copy. Now from here, it kind of boils down to personal preference on how you like to edit your Milky Way. Um, I like to do a little bit of dodging of the highlights right on the core. And I'm also going to burn a little bit. This is for the shadows. I'm going to take a bigger brush and just kind of swoop over the whole sky and darken it but I just want it to be really subtle so here's the before and this is the after and just give it a little bit of a pop and we could do some more adjustments in Lightroom um, if you don't like the vignetting here in the corners we could also dodge our shadows so go back to the dodge tool switch to shadows keep it on one percent do a really large brush just kind of dodge these a little bit just to lighten them so again here's the before and the after so I'm going to flatten this again hit file save this should bring it over into Lightroom as a TIFF file Okay, so here we are back in Lightroom with the blended file. Now, if you want to brighten this street a little bit, you could do that. I suggest keeping the grassy area kind of dark and maybe just highlighting the street only. So let's bump this exposure up. Bring up the whites. And make the feather a little higher, like around 65 or 70. You also play with clarity and they added a new slider called texture um, if you want. I'm not going to do that for the street, but I will do it on the Milky Way. So I'm going to hit done for this one. And I'll make another one right here. I 
I like to go at 100% just to see what it does, but I typically keep it around 20 or 30%. And texture seems to really bring out the stars if you like that type of look. I'm not going to do it for this image. Again, I wouldn't really apply all these changes to the foreground. The foreground is already kind of dark and contrasty already. Um, so I would pretty much leave that alone and I would just make some adjustments to the sky only. Now this image also is a little on the cooler side in the sky. You could always warm that up. Um, I actually like it with the cooler tone for this particular image. So I'm going to leave that. But it pretty much boils down to personal preference right here. Now if the foreground looks a little on the muddy side, you could always take some contrast out and that will kind of help a little bit. It might brighten it as well, which is fine. Again, there's a lot of light pollution in the sky, so this particular foreground could get away with being a little brighter. All right, so that's gonna be it for the editing portion. Um, but the main takeaway of this video tutorial is basically try and make sure your foreground exposure is consistent with your sky exposure. So um, if you have a decent amount of light pollution, you could get away with a little bit brighter foreground. If the sky is really dark, you might have to darken this foreground uh, at least further away towards the horizon to make it look like a natural blend. So for example, if I put a slider here and make this sky really dark. And you have a really bright foreground and horizon line that just abruptly meets a dark sky. It's going to look weird and unnatural. So just keep that in mind and use your best judgment. Also, thanks again to Patrick for letting me use his photos to create this tutorial. Hopefully this helps you out and others as well. Don't forget to check out his links in the description below. He has some really cool time lapses um, and drone footage. So thanks again. Take it easy, guys. I'll catch you later.